time to decode, decode the, the book, book of, of Revelation. Well, why is it so that Christians need to read the book of Revelation? Why is it so that we need to study it, to read it, and to meditate it? But you see, the question here is, there are so many Christians out there that are shying away from the book of Revelation and even eschatology. Yeah, so I mean, just look at the times we are in right now. Uh, many are turning uh, according to the major events that are happening across the globe. I mean, just look at this year. Uh, just in 2020, we see that it's defined by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has led to a global social and uh, economic disruption, including a major recession. And actually, this pandemic has dwarfed many other chaos or political wars or even natural disasters like uh, severe flooding or earthquakes that are happening around the place. So I'm sure all these have transpired the thought of the end times, right? Right, I mean, we, we just felt that, you know, the time is right for us to actually study the book of Revelations. Well, we have to read the book of Revelations the way how it's intended to be studied and to be read as well. Well, in this book of Revelations, we can see that God is trying to reveal to his servant, his last disciple, a lot of information about what took place and what is going to take place until he comes again. Right, so sometimes also known as the Apocalypse of John, the book of Revelation is at the core of Christian eschatology. So this word Revelation comes from the Greek word Apocalypsis. So this has a meaning of disclosure or revelation, conveying the idea of laying it bare or uncovering something. So the very name of this word means to disclose, to lay bare or to reveal the divine mysteries. So what is the meaning of this eschatology? So eschatology in meaning, it means the theology concerning death, judgment, and the final destiny of soul and even the humankind. Well, in small term, in simple term, we can say that eschatology is the meaning of doctrine of the last things. It mainly consists of studying the scriptures of the prophecy of the end times. The teaching of eschatology is very important actually for Christians and even for churches as well, because they form the foundations of our faith and not just that, it is also the crown and the capstones of our systematic theology. Right, so I believe that this topic, eschatology, clearly deserves our careful attention within these last days. So now we should never base our understanding uh, of the end times through some movies or fantasy books or some right. random assumptions about the future, but rather let us return to the scriptures to unveil the truth. Right, that's right. You see, one of the reasons why we actually come up with this series is because, you know, we have been deceived. I mean, I myself have been a victim of this. There are so many people out there that come up with different kind of interpretations and formula to try to decipher this book of Revelations. But it results to a lot of misinterpretations and even a lot of debatable doctrine that we have, you see. Hmm. As we uncover the book of Revelations, we have to understand the prophecy explanation and holds to a historical view. And so it means to say that a lot of prophecies in the Bible has historically being in the process of being fulfilled throughout the whole entire mankind history even until to the time when Jesus returned again. Yeah, so this stands in contrast to the enemy's deception of saying that most prophecy will be fulfilled in the, late, the last few years that is to come. So by getting Christians to look for a future fulfillment, Satan has uh, allowed them not to realize who the Antichrist or the false prophet is, whom in fact he has empowered uh, to war against the Messiah and his church in the last days. So this creates many false expectations of how the end times will be played out so that Christians will not be prepared for the events that are about to take place. Exactly, you know, when we talk about eschatology and that's why we talk about, you know, apocalyptic uh, events, you know, when we think about these two words, what do you actually come into your mind? What kind of feelings do you have? Because, you know, I myself growing up, we watch movies, right? And we'll be able to see, watch a lot of apocalyptic or end time 2012, this kind of thing. We think about aliens. Uh, judgments, uh, we think about uh, fear, you know, um, end of the world, that kind of thing. Or even uh, recently we had the zombie attacks kind hmm. of thing. Uh, a lot of fear being um, been stimulated through all these movies. In many years, there's been speculations and belief that catastrophic and transformative events would come and occur during the years 2012 because mm. it's known as the last year mentioned in the right. calendar and even 2049 because it's the last year of Jewish calendar. Well, that's a lot of because speculations and belief. But you know what? It's not wrong to speculate and to assume because the end will soon come. But know this, in the Bible it says that He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God is the one who created the beginning and He will be the one that put an end to all history as well. 
Right, so let us probably have an introduction to this book of Revelation. It is in fact recorded by the Apostle John during a time of persecution where he was captured in an anti-Christian persecution campaign under the Roman Emperor Domitian where he was later actually exiled to the island of Patmos in the end of his life. And you know this, that Apostle John is actually the last surviving disciple from Jesus' time. So John recorded divine visions from God giving, reveal, being revealed by Jesus about the events that would take place in the end times in this book. And so it's important for us to read this book. This book is written in AD 80 to 90 around that time. During his remaining time on earth, he lived in Ephesus until his death at AD 100 and after John's death, he ended the time of this apostolic age. Right, so we have mentioned that the word apocalypse means the disclosing of the divine mysteries and it is in this book that reveals the patterns of history and the final fulfillment of God's promise and and of course it's the last book from the last disciple of Jesus. So what does Jesus actually intend us to actually do with this information that is revealed to John. You see, John received all this instruction from Jesus so to release this message and this letter to the seven churches. Well, not just to the seven churches but of course to all his believers as well. In these messages, it contains very, very encouraging letters and reminders for the people, the believers, to remain faithful and obedient to God no matter what persecution comes and no matter what happened to them. So what is the message for? To overcome to, uh, to overcome, to repent, to keep the commandments of God, to overcome and to withdraw themselves from ungodly ways and temptations, and also to never compromise their faith and obedience towards God. In one word to say, is that the reason why God revealed to His servant is so to remind them what they need to do, so to keep their faith until Jesus returns so that they can inherit the kingdom of God. Wow! So we see this book truly reveals that God is the almighty God, the history, uh, the master of history, and also uh, nothing can disrupt the workings of God's plan for his people. Right. And we also see, uh, it also describes the love, the incomprehensible love of Jesus Christ and his message to all the churches, which is his bride. So now we see that really this book is not just about the wrath and judgment of God, as so many has read and misunderstood. So let us turn to this scripture in Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 to 11 to see this. So let us read together. I was in a spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. And so in order to study the book of Revelation, we first have to understand the structure of this book of Revelations. Well, this book of Revelations is separated and it spans from three literary genres uh, to have a better understanding of what God is trying to tell us. Yes, that's right. So first we have the epistolary genre. So this spans from chapters 1 to 5. So in this first section, it is actually the letters that John wrote to address the seven churches in Asia Minor. So within these letters were the message of encouragement from Jesus to the churches as well as warnings. Why? To not compromise their faith even in a time of persecution and tribulation. So although we see that this message of Jesus was released to the seven churches only, but uh, we look at this number seven, it is understood to denote perfection or completion. So in fact, the illustration of the seven churches were the representation of all the churches. Wow, so yeah, then we come to the second part of the book of Revelation, which is Apocalyptics. That's in Revelation chapter 6 through 16. Well, the second part of this book actually occurs from the time when Jesus ascended into heaven until his second coming again. So that means to say that this is the age that we're living in right now right. and it's the most relevant to That's us today. And so being the most relevant part to us today, we'll be concentrating most of the efforts from chapter 6 to 16 of the book of Revelations. Right, so due to the apocalyptic nature, we must not go into this book of Revelations expecting the logical and well-developed themes as most of the scriptures. So I think those of you who have read Revelations will agree with me that it is full of abrupt changes and impossible combinations. I mean, just look at, there's this, the beast, 
with 10 horns and on 10 horns, 10 crowns. Can you imagine? Well, to me, I also think that actually Book of Revelation is very hard to understand if we don't understand the symbols and all sorts of stuff. So the question here is, why is it hard to decipher and the true meanings in the book of Revelation, especially this chapter 6 to 16 onwards. So within these chapters, you'll be able to see a lot of different kind of symbols. We'll be able to see that God will use symbols, word, phrases, images, and the patterns of ancient covenants to actually support and to drive a message to his believers, to his own people. Right. So in order for us to uncover this book, we will have to see a lot of symbols and metaphor, like for example, the ten horns, and the ten crowns, and the beasts, and the women's, and the uh, horsemen, etc., and etc. So all this we need interpretations to reveal its true meaning of God's intention to us. Remember, okay, God never create things out of random or create things out of nothing. Everything that He have created has a purpose and has a plan. And therefore, we also understand that this symbol that God used is consistent throughout the whole entire Bible. Uh, it's consistent throughout the Old Testament to the New Testament as well. And even in Jewish apocalyptic literature. And all those documents will able, able, enable us to reveal its true meanings. An important case which will be able to draw parallels in Old Testament, especially in the book of Daniel, Ezekiel, and Isaiah. Right. So do you know that there are more allusions within this book of Revelations to the Old Testament as compared to all the entire books of New Testaments combined? So as we study the book of Revelations, we really need to read it with the Old Testaments open. Why? To review and to understand the historical background about God's promises for His people. And when we do this, all the symbolism horse, horseman, beast, woman, it all pretty makes sense now. And once that happens, we are all in a position to get everything out of Revelation and we were intended to get. So why do I say that? So we must understand that the New Testaments will be invalid without the presence of the Old Testament. And there should be a consistency when we study the scriptures in the Bible from Gen Genesis, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. So both testaments are required to understand the overview uh, of what God has purposed for His children. So as we are going to study the book of Revelations, we need to come to an understanding that the New Testament is written in mention of a fulfillment of God's promises in the Old Testament and of the New Covenant given through Jesus Christ. And most, most importantly, the Bible must be allowed to be interpreted by itself. Yep. So, as prophecy is history written before it happens, in history, we find prophecy fulfilled. So there we go. We see the importance of symbols working to the Lord's end so that people can understand the meaning what God is trying to tell them. Mm -hmm. So on one level, they have to protect the message from being lost or diluted over the centuries by corrupted hands. On the other hand, they have to provide a message with richness and the depth of understanding that allow readers and believers to appreciate the Lord and His work more fully. Right, so we have come now to the last genre, which is the prophetic genre. This is taken from Revelation chapter 17 to 22. So here, mystery unfolds in a mighty way as God's words open a window of illumination into what is ahead for the world and mankind. And John's language in his account involves reference to the biblical prophecy and apocalyptic symbolism surrounding the role of Jesus Christ in God's end times plan. Right, the final chapters of Revelations clearly predict the return of Jesus Christ and he wrapped up the whole entire mankind history. Well, this gave hope to the Christians facing persecutions from outside the church and also within the church where there are factions that come from different kind of teachings and doctrine and etc. So Revelation chapter 17 to 22 describes the crescendos of the final earthly events and fulfilling the heavenly father's plans of the redemption for his children and even the earth will receive a celestial glory and becoming the eternal home for all righteous saints. And of course, not to forget this very important thing is that Jesus triumphed over evil eternally. Wow, all right, so shall we wrap this up today? We yep. hope that none of you will become discouraged in the study of Revelation because of all the mystical symbols that we have heard. We hope that through this study together, we will attempt to make the most complex and mysterious book understandable even to non-theologian believers. So we truly recognize the challenge for what, is, what it is, 
But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we hope to present a clear understanding that we have with this book of Revelation. And therefore, we ask that regardless of what present viewpoint you have, just keep your mind open. As we study the book of Revelations, remember the truth is the essence of God's wisdom. So God promised a special blessing for all those to have studied the book of Revelations. But the book of Revelations is like a puzzle with many locks. And then we need to find the right keys to unlock this book of Revelations. You know, according to God's wonderful wisdom, He hides all this key throughout the Bible. And it's very important for us to find out from different parts of the Bible all these keys so that we can understand the true meaning of what God is telling us in the book of Revelations. So, as we understand the book of Revelations, we will be able to understand the whole entire Bible as well. Well, are you ready to receive the blessings from God here? In Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, here says, Blessed is he who read and those who hear the word of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. 